Okay. Here we go. Now we're going to start again. Now screen share. And there it is. Let me click on it and hopefully you will see it. Then I do share. All right, and present. Very good. Oh yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? Okay, can everybody see? Welcome to worship at Buxton United Methodist Church. We are glad that you came to join us this day, this third Sunday of Advent. So let's take a look, go through some quick announcements. Buxton Toy Box, everything is due tomorrow morning at the town hall. So if you got a purchase gift, that's where it would need to get dropped off and monetary donations um, should go there as well. Wednesday morning, Zoom Bible study. Guess what? There's been a change. It's not going to be Wednesday anymore. It's going to be Tuesday. We'll have another slide that will show that, but I'll, I'll hit you twice with that one. Okay, technology ethics. Our service is recorded, and if you do not wish to be seen, make sure you click on that video camera so that you won't have your face online. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to remember uh, to please use only first names, whether we're talking about prayer concerns or anything that comes up. Speaking of prayer concerns, down at the bottom of your screen, you will have a little chat feature. It looks like a little talking bubble. And um, if you click on that, you're able to write in any of your prayer concerns for our prayer time. Let's see, change in time. Bible study, Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. And we are learning about the prophet Daniel and his friends and when they were in Babylon and their lasting legacy, all right, which affects our Christmas story. And that's it for announcements. And Renee has said that she is willing to light a candle for us this morning. So Renee, if you could start us off by lighting a candle to represent that third candle of joy. I light this candle of joy with great reverence and wonder and indeed joy and with thankfulness. Amen. Thank you, Renee. That was beautiful. All right, and our Linda has something beautiful for us also. We're going to have a beautiful gift of holiday music on her home organ. Wonderful. That 
it was beautiful. We didn't know it was going to actually be a duet. So thank you so much to Linda and Jimmy. We really appreciate that. All right. And our call to worship this morning is going to be done by our Renee. Come, let us sing with joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our, of our salvation. Come before God with thanksgiving. We will praise our God with music, song, and all our hearts. Beautiful. Now we have Sean and Jean who are going to be doing the opening prayer next, but I would ask you all to join together, but we're gonna need you to mute yourselves, okay? Yeah. Um, so, um, please go ahead and do that, and then you'll be able to speak along. And for some reason, I'm not finding my mute anymore, but I'm just going to refrain from speaking. So go ahead, Sean and Jean. Today, Today Lord, Lord, let, let us, us experience, experience joy through the message, message the music, and, and the, the people around us. us. Fill, Fill our hearts with, with the joy that earthly things cannot give. give. Help, Help us, us feel joy in this time of uncertainty when we hear the news, read the papers, and that which we are experiencing ourselves. Bring peace, love, and joy to this worship time today. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Beautiful. Thank you both very much. I'm going to ask Lynn Ganya to unmute now. She has a children's message for us and for Marie's grandchildren who I know are there. So maybe Marie would like to unmute too because in case there's any uh, conversation happening. Can you hear us now? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, as you know, we're in the season of Advent and it won't be long before Christmas is here. I love this season. I get so excited. In fact, after it's over and the lights come down and all that, I feel a little blue. But I love the Christmas music, uh, hymns. I love the Christmas lights. I love Christmas movies, Christmas baking of cookies and cakes. I love giving and I love receiving gifts as well. I love getting Christmas cards. I love the smell of the Christmas candles and the trees, and I love looking out in the night sky and see the twinkling lights. One thing I mentioned when I just started was about giving and receiving gifts. When we were young, we had a Christmas tree just the day before Christmas, and there weren't gifts underneath. In the morning, we would receive a couple of gifts on Christmas morning, and we'd get all excited when we saw them. And as a child, I would think that the biggest gift was the best gift, but not necessarily so. My mother's cousin uh, used to come, her name was Christy. She used to come down from Bangor and they would bake cookies and everything the week before. They'd make stuffed dates and pinwheel cookies and all that. And we were excited to be able to test, taste them. Well, I. Christy, which we used to call her because we were young, um, told me that the biggest gift doesn't necessarily mean the best gift. Sometimes the smallest gifts are your best. Mm -hmm. Now we know about our Mary and Joseph when they traveled to Bethlehem and she got a gift. Excuse me, sorry. Oops, I'll check it out. <coughs> I'm sorry. She got the best gift, and it was a baby. It probably weighed six pounds at the very most. It wasn't a big baby, but a small one. And that was the best gift that she could ever, ever receive. It may be small, and he was, he was tiny and cute, but he was the best gift that she not only received, but we did. It was the gift to the whole world. The gift of salvation so it is true when we look at our christmas presents this year not only we should think of maybe the little gift is the best gift of all and we did receive the best and the biggest gift and that was jesus the son of god 
And I love you all and have a Merry Christmas. Thanks. See you. And I'm sorry, the phone ringing. Oh. <laughs> you gotta unmute again. Thank you so much, Lynn. Um, I'll ask everybody to mute again. If you are not uh, speaking, that does help it be less gurgly for us. It's funny that it's not uh, going for me to the next slide. There we go. And our Lingonia is up again. She's going to be reading our Old Testament, which is Psalm 126. And this is called a prayer for deliverance. When the Lord brought us back to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. How we laughed, how we sang for joy. Then the other nations said about us, the Lord did great things for them. Indeed, he did great things for us. How happy we were. Lord, take us back to our land, just as the rain brings water back to dry riverbeds. Let those who wept as they planted their crops gather the harvest with joy. Those who wept as they went out carrying the seed will come back singing for joy as they bring in the harvest. And I thought when it mentions joy, this is the season of joy. Thanks. Excellent. And now we have, uh, I think we're going to have our Bill sharing with us the gospel, followed by another treat from Bill. And, uh, and this is Mary's song, so-called. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. All right. Now we'll see what we can. so much bill for sharing that that was beautiful all right and now let's prepare our hearts this morning for our morning message and lord may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto your sight O lord our strength and our redeemer well some things have been on the rise in recent years uh some of those things are not necessarily good things. Mental health disorders have been rising, loneliness and unhappiness. Those are three things that have been on the rise. And with COVID-19 and having to isolate ourselves so often, the numbers have risen even higher. But I'm gonna take a look at just a few statistics that go back before the pandemic. According to Mental Health America, 
Prior to the pandemic, 44 million adults in America had a mental health diagnosis, which is 18% of the population. And that number, mind you, are those who are diagnosed, not those who are not. In actuality, that number would be far higher, especially after the pandemic. Well, Americans, we're told, also suffer from loneliness. And this statistic from the Scientific American says that 61% of adults say that they experience severe loneliness. And yet, if we look further and brought more broadly, the highest hit age bracket for experiencing loneliness in our nation are actually adolescents. And I know some of you are teachers out there, so that may or may not surprise you. And I know it surprised me because the, the teenagers today have all kinds of forms of technology at their fingertips and they know how to use it much more better than we do. But the study shows us that teens today are lonelier than ever before. I wondered why. Well, apparently they have all of these friends on social media, but our young people today say they are starved for actual in-person friendships. Now, the last group of statistics I wanna share is from the World Happiness Report. I hadn't known until this sermon that there was such a thing, but apparently every year there is a survey given among different nations. And despite a strong economy, a healthy life expectancy and the freedom to make our own choices, Americans have taken a tumble down to 19th spot on the World Happiness Report. I found that statistic very interesting, especially as we are now officially in the holidays season. That's the secular world, what they call it, right? The holidays. And the word joy which is a vital word for the Christian Christmas celebration, it becomes capitalized upon by marketers in the secular world at this time of year. Just try to watch the news in the evening and I'll bet you will lose count of all the times you hear the song, joy to the world, all the boys and girls, joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea, joy to you and me. When Three Dog Night wrote that cute little song about Jeremiah the Bullfrog back in 1970, I'll bet he had no idea that 50 years later, it would be used almost exclusively in a massive holiday marketing campaign. Vehicles, jewelry, stores with delivery to your home, they're all using this song, it seems, this year. It's almost been turned into a Christmas carol. And this week, Renee lit for us the candle of joy for Advent. This begs us, of course, to ask the question, what is joy really? Obviously, all human beings want it, judging by how it is being pushed in marketing. So where do we find joy? That is the question that we're going to answer this morning. And it's an age-old question, one that has been asked by many people, over hundreds of years. But in order to answer a question, sometimes it's best to start with looking at where we do not find it. Certainly we won't find joy in the driver's seat of a new car, as I saw in just one of the many commercials aired during the news hour. Mm -hmm. Neither will it be found in any one particular retail store, nor I dare say in a seasonal holiday flavored beverage. Let's take a look first at some folks who have sought joy in various ways and in various places over the centuries. We're gonna start with a man named Voltaire. He was a great French writer, historian, philosopher, and world-renowned atheist. Perhaps that's what he's best known for, for his critique of Christianity, a faith he thought to be absurd. But Voltaire didn't find joy through his unbelief. Despite his clever wit and intelligence, he plummeted into despair and wrote these sad, despondent words. 
I wish I had never been born, he wrote. Now you can't get any further away from joy than that. Next, the romantic poet Lord Byron wrote many popular poems in the early 1800s. He traveled extensively and was famous for his poem, Don Juan. Well, as the name of his character suggests, Lord Byron was a pleasure seeker in life. And if anyone ever lived a life of pleasure, certainly it was he. Pleasure certainly should give joy, right? Wrong. Even in pleasure, he never found joy. And in despair, he penned these words. The worm, the canker, and the grief are mine alone. You can tell he was a poet, right? <laughs> Let's jump across the pond to America now, the land of opportunity. Jay Gould was an American capitalist champion of the 19th century. He made his fortunes when manifest destiny was the mindset of the populace and people were moving westward in droves. His business was the railroad. Now, when I think of him, I can't help but think of that original Monopoly game board, right? It had four railroads on it, one per side. And if you could manage to get all four of them, you could do pretty well in the game. Well, Jay Gould certainly did do quite well. He had a distinguished career in business already, but in 1879, he had an amazing business deal. He merged as owner the Union Pacific Missouri Pacific, and the Transcontinental Railroads. Wow, did he make millions. So much so, in fact, that his net worth in today's economy would have been $71 billion. A lot of money. That is a lot of money. <laughs> if anyone could afford to buy joy with money, certainly Jay Gould could. Mm -hmm. But no. He died on, of tuberculosis and on his deathbed, even with all that fortune, he said, I suppose I am the most miserable man on earth. My goodness, people haven't been having any luck anywhere finding joy, have they? So far, joy can't be found in food, retail, or in the receiving of gifts. It can't be found in unbelief the seeking of pleasure or in wealth either. So let's move on and try fame. Lord Beaconsfield was granted the title of Earl by none other than Queen Victoria herself. And twice he became prime minister. He enjoyed more fame and position than most people ever would have. Yet he wrote, youth is a mistake, manhood a struggle, old age has been a regret. Apparently fame and position do not give joy either for he is yet another example of a person in despair. Well, what about the military? Certainly power and might should lead to joy, right? Well, who could be more famous for military might than Alexander the Great? He had one of the greatest military minds ever and his kingdom was the largest the ancient world had ever seen. And yet it is said Alexander wept in his tent because there were no more worlds for him to conquer. Without war to ravage, he was lost in despair. So we add to our list, joy cannot be found in fame, position, power, or military might. We've done a marvelous job so far at determining then where joy cannot be found. Where then we ask, where is real joy found? The answer is surprisingly simple. Joy is not of this world. So we certainly cannot find it in the things of this world. Joy comes from having a faith in our God. And for the Christian, we find it in Christ our Lord. The scriptures tell us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in the Christmas story, the angels tell those humble shepherds of the birth of Jesus Christ, their savior. In Luke 1.10, they say to those simple shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the world's people. Let's, uh, let's establish something now then. 
And this, I believe, is where the secular world gets it wrong. You see, joy and happiness are not the same thing. That's what the secular world is trying to sell this time of year, especially happiness. But joy and happiness are not the same thing. And here's the amazing thing. You don't have to be happy to experience joy. All we have to do is look to the Bible and the scenes of Christmas and the Christmas story to see that. You know, the Christmas stories are anything but happy scenes. The Roman Empire was filled with horrible poverty and governmental oppression. There was heavy taxation. And in our gospel lesson today, young Mary, who was part of this oppressive time and culture, she is glorifying God with praise, filled with joy. How, we wonder, can she be joyful? The situation she found herself in was anything but happy, or safe for that matter. She was not yet married. To be pregnant out of wedlock as a Jewish woman in antiquity meant she could be stoned to death. That thought is terrifying. After receiving this news from the angel Gabriel, Mary, we are told in Luke's gospel, left to visit her cousin Elizabeth. We aren't told this, but I think she left to see her older cousin for strength. It was there in the home of Zachariah and Elizabeth when Mary sees her cousin that our scripture today takes place. As Bill said, known as Mary's song, it is like a hymn of joy. She stayed there with Elizabeth for six months. And when she returned to Nazareth to the man she had promised her faithfulness to, he found her to be six months pregnant. Now, Mary probably should have stayed with Zachariah and Elizabeth, or she could have. But instead, she took a great risk by going back home. Would Joseph accuse her? Would her own family join in the chorus that must have rang out calling for her to be stoned? Let's remember back to how we opened our message time today. We talked about loneliness and unhappiness being on the rise, even before the pandemic. Well, I want to assure you all of this. There was no happiness in Mary's situation, not one bit. And remember, at first, Joseph, Joseph rejected Mary, intending to divorce her quietly. I can only imagine the rejection she felt from her family and also her community. Talk about loneliness. Mary knew both loneliness and unhappiness. She knew them both full well. But Mary still had joy. Great joy, in fact. Knowing she would give birth to the promised Messiah for God's people, the desire of all nations. She could not help but sing out in joy. Friends, the answer to the question, where do we find true joy? It's in our faith in God. For believers, the joy of the Lord is our strength and our Lord came to be among us to show us the way that we should live. Our savior came to offer us forgiveness for our sins and the promise of eternal life. Nothing, my friends, can take that away ever. Mental health can't take that away. Stress can't take that away. Loneliness can't take that away. Unhappiness can't take that away. Even a pandemic can't take that away. These things are all part of what we call the storms of life. When the storms of life come and they will, we can all be assured that the winds will be blowing and the rain will come. Whether that rain is a steady drizzle, a pelting freezing rain, or a monsoon deluge, no matter what befalls us, when we have Jesus, we still have. We always can have joy. The rain may fall, but like Mary, we can still sing out in true joy, no matter how bleak our situation may appear in life. So I want to share with you a closing illustration. 
There was a woman who was weary after suffering for many months with a painful terminal Ill illness. Her pastor went to see her for a visit in hospice care. The pastor expected that she might be struggling with questions and felt downtrodden, but that was not the case. The pastor sat, took hold of her hand and asked, how are you today, Margaret? This lovely saint responded, oh, pastor, I have such a lovely robin that sings outside my window. In the early morning, as I lie here, it serenades me. Then as a smile brightened her thin features, she added, I love that bird that our God created, Pastor, because it sings in the rain. She continued, that is the most beautiful thing about how God created robins. Storms silence other birds that are songbirds, but the robin sings on. The robin sings in the rain. Now this woman was in pain. She was suffering and she was dying. She had no reason to be happy. And yet she had joy in the bleakest of circumstances. The pastor had expected to minister to the dying woman that day, but instead the pastor was the one who received. Now, I don't know for certain if robins are the only songbirds that will sing in the rain. I love birds and have just begun this year to feed them. I'm no expert on birds. But I do know that this is a perfect example of the way Christians are supposed to be. You see, anybody can sing in the sunshine. What distinguishes those of us who have faith from the rest of the world is our ability to experience joy despite the hardships of life. When we have Jesus, we have the source of true joy. The world can hit us with whatever it will. But no matter what it is, if we put our trust in God, we can still experience true joy. Christians, we should be singing even when the clouds pour out rain. Because Christ is still with us. Christ is the source of our joy. So people of God, remember that the source of your joy is within you. The very breath of God, your maker, is inside you. For we have the Ruach of God, the breath of God inside us. Take that breath and let's start singing in the rain. Because we are people of joy. And I am just realizing now that you folks are all very very polite because no one mentioned to me that my picture uh, was was gone and you were seeing a picture of me and my goat. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know that. <laughs> my apologies to you. Next time someone speak up, let me know and I'll fix that problem. My goodness. Uh, that was my, I'm sorry. Your uh, video, your audio was starting to break up a couple times, so I, I shut off your camera. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. That's great. Okay, then. Well, at least you had a nice picture of Scrappy and I. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. <laughs> Those are always a good picture. All right. I am going to stop my screen share now so that I can take a look and see if, I'll need my glasses for that, though. Got to find out where I put it. Can't read it. Um, that way I can take a look at the chat. Let's see. There it is. Stop share. All right. Let me see if I can go find the chat feature. I do see some of you had written some things. I think it was oh, just me. Someone wrote, who's playing those bells? What a great touch. That was our Jimmy, I think. So we'll give thanks for that. And then Sean, um, Ron, you, was let it, you were letting me know in the chat. Bless your heart. All right, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this day and the way we can gather together through Zoom. And we give thanks for being able to do this at such a time as this. We ask you to help us to remember, Lord God, that you are the source of true joy. Even when life is downtrodden, Lord, you still give us joy. 
Help us to receive it, help us to feel it, and more than anything, help us to spread it to a world that lives in darkness. Lord, we lift up now those in our congregation who are in need of prayer. And we remember still our sister Karen, who is very sick. Um, and I'll take a moment of quiet now so that folks can unmute and they can lift up the first name of someone they know in need of prayer. Brent Anderson. Please remember first names only. Jane. We give thanks that God not only hears our prayers, but answers them. And now we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. And I would ask us all to mute again so that we could share this prayer together. Um, and I'm going to see if maybe our Ron would be the one to do the Lord's Prayer for us. The rest of us can go ahead and share it. But um, Ron will be the one who's unmuted. All right, I'll give it a go. But, you know, I'm going to forget something in the middle. All right. let's, let's, let's join together in prayer for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ron, I'm sorry I put you on the spot like that. Wasn't even thinking about that, that you might forget. When we're on the spot, sometimes we do, but you did fantastic. We thank you. If you don't think about it too much, it comes. <laughs> yes, that's right. All right. So next, for some reason, this is, there we go. We want to thank you all for your gifts of financial support that you continue to give. And we remember our founder, John Wesley's words, make all you can save all you can and give all that you can. And now we have our Linda who's going to close us out. We're going to do the hymn, Joy to the World. I would ask you all to mute and you'll be able to sing. I even have the words here on our screen for us. So we'll let our Linda go ahead and give us a little introduction and away we'll go. Maybe our Jean would be kind enough to stay unmuted so that we can hear her lovely voice. Wouldn't that be nice? I think you'll get echoes of Linda's organ. So it won't work.
You're muted. I know, I'm sorry, I was trying to find it. For some reason, my mute, when I'm sharing screen, it will disappear on me. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm looking all over and I can't find it anywhere. All right, let's go ahead and close in benediction. I'll stop the recording and then um, Ron can tell us what he's gonna do for fellowship time. This is written by John Armstrong. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and, and may the peace of the Christ child, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. All right, Ron, you're up. All right. So here's... Uh... Fellowship is so what you're going to practice on. It's I'm going to break us up into breakout rooms. And I know how to get it started. I'm not sure how it ends. So here's the deal. I, I think I, I think I get a cue and I get to break you out. But you're going to be randomly thrown into a breakout room with uh, two to two other folks. Uh, one of our concentrations today. Uh, it's, I clicked stop. That's I okay. clicked stop recording. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Jean. Alt, I did, but it's not. Let me try it the other way with Alt 